Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode here in the series. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. Last episode we went ahead and uplifted some of our implementation here to actually make use of the uh, data binding here. Uh, as we can see inside of our layout file we're just setting the title to the uh, domain models title that we have. If you missed it go ahead and check it out. And uh, we also covered uh, let's see the binding adapters here. We created our own file. We basically added new functionality on top of a recycler view and uh, Yeah, really just showed off the power of data binding the whole library there So if you missed it go ahead and check it out uh, I'll link a card in the top right and in today's episode We are going to get into a little bit of image loading in Android. It's been covered on the channel before but um, We're just going to progress with this application here by getting images on screen here and uh, that starts here with our Picasso library. We have basically added this into the implementation uh, of our build.gradle file off screen. So that's all there is in this file. And then we will come back here and actually make things happen. But what I wanna show you is the fact that we have updated our news feed here a tiny bit. So if you uh, have been following the series here, you know that there were just two uh, items in this list before and now there are a total of five and on top of it we have actually built out some more information here so we have the rank field the description fields but the image url the published the source and the url of the actual article itself are all now coming down inside of one object in the newsfeed here from firebase so we can um, you know replicate this inside of our code to make use of all this information. So let's flip back over to the code real quick and get that done. Inside of our newsfeed activity here, we have the uh, adapter, but we also tell our view model to fetch the newsfeed in that newsfeed here, the function. We tell our repository to fetch the newsfeed, and then we eventually bubble up here what we get from Firebase into a live data that is observed at the activity level. If you've been following, this is all new, and specifically right here, we parse out all of the um, actual children in the snapshot here in the data that we got from the Firebase event listener. And if we click into the newsfeed item, we see that there are just two fields here. So we can go ahead and just update this. I believe we had source, which was a string. Gone ahead and updated all of the uh, fields here so that they replicate and they match exactly what we have in here. We are leaving the rank field out because that is not necessarily necessary for us uh, to actually make use of. And otherwise we just kind of pushed the same key here to be a variable name in our data class and then the uh, magic of Firebase will just inject the data into uh, these particular fields here. So if we go ahead and rerun it, we won't necessarily you know, make use of any of these fields at the moment, but we will actually see the, the five elements on screen here. So as we can see, all five of them load in, um, and they do load in correctly as far as tracking SARS, COVID-2 variants is uh, the last one in the list, and then the what we know about science is the first one. And if we go ahead and flip back here, we see rank one is the uh, what we know about science, and rank five here is tracking SARS. So we are properly fetching all this, we are properly sorting all of this, um, even though they are in a different order here, we are making use of this rank field to go ahead and actually rank them or sort them uh, inside of our code. And so now really everything kind of boils down to the newsfeed recycler view adapter because we are just, you know, displaying what is on screen here um, as far as, you know, what exists inside of this view holder. So if we take a look at this view holder, it is pretty simple at the moment. I'm going to go ahead and just update this so that we can get some other information on screen. Okay, hello everybody, welcome back. Um, I decided to cut the time lapse because it was just way too long. Apologize for that. But nevertheless, here we are. We have our view layer here updated, the view model here, or sorry, excuse me, the view holder. Um, and as you can see here, we have this beautiful background image here. Um, so we've added an image view up top. We are actually accessing a, uh, a handful of these built in, um, I guess, images for Android, if you will. Uh, by using the tools colon source and then this path at tools sample background scenic and then it's basically like an array so you can just flip this around to be whatever you want here um, and yeah I kind of like the the leaves here uh, we left these two fields untouched but then we added some little source and uh, date down here in just like uh, italics and whatnot just spaced everything out appropriately and um, yeah pretty simple UI here uh, so then if we bounce over to the actual view holder implementation here, 
we see that I've gone ahead and added in the binding.source and the binding.publish equal the elements from the newsfeed item, uh, our data model here, and then our Picasso instance here, we load in the uh, image view, uh, we load in the image URL here. And so also at the end of the file here, we now have multiple variables here. So we have the title and description, uh, we are going to make use of the image URL in a second, and then we have the source and the published all as strings here, and then uh, particularly the source and image, or excuse me, the source and published text views have, um, you know, making use of the data binding like we have been so far here, referencing the actual variables defined in this file with at, and then inside the parentheses here are those square brackets, no, squiggly brackets, excuse me, um, the name of the variable. So uh, let's go ahead and just give that a run and let's see where we end up. Okay, and we are installing here on the device, coming into the foreground, uh, a brief, probably could make use of a little bit of a loading state there, but then we can see here we have our header image, we have the title, and then we see here the source and uh, the date timestamp there. So things are starting to roll into, um, you know, potentially what would look like a newsfeed actually. So I'm quite happy about that. Uh, I do apologize for a little bit of the stuttering and this little bit of this lag that you see here. I think it's just my computer uh, struggling to do everything that it's doing at the moment. But um, more or less each individual tile, if that's what we care about right now, uh, looks pretty good, looks pretty clean, right? These header images, all this stuff is coming from Firebase here, so uh, we could very easily switch this out and in real time see these update and, and all that kind of good stuff. So um, for now, I think this is uh, working just fine. However, as I mentioned before, I did want to make use of uh, the image URL in a different way here, right? So what we can do here is we can say binding image URL equals our news feed item image URL. And then as we learned in the last episode here, we can actually kind of enhance some of our uh, functionality here with the binding adapter. And so we're going to do the exact same thing here. Uh, I guess we can make a new region. So we'll say region image view, um, duplicate that and then end region and inside here, let's say, let's do load with Picasso. We're going to be given an image view and then also the image URL, which is going to be a string. If we go ahead and annotate this function with basically the name of the function, it's a pretty good pattern here. We do binding adapter, and then we can just inside of parentheses, pass in a particular string here that is going to be the new asset. Then we can go ahead and just take uh, basically this entire implementation, and we can pop this stuff in here and we will make use of the image URL that is passed into us, and then we will load that into this particular image view. So uh, one quick note here, if you are not familiar with the region, at least on Mac, you can do Command Shift minus, and that will collapse everything here, and then you can kind of click into them to expand them. I believe if you hover over it, it'll uh, open it up as well in that, that little window that flies out there. Um, so region and end region here are just like little helpers that you can kind of make use of uh, inside of your IDE here inside of Android Studio just to clean your code up a little bit. And so when you have one file that has multiple different regions, right, um, it kind of makes sense to make use of this. So if you didn't know that, uh, put a thumbs up on the video, really appreciate it. And otherwise here, what we've basically done is we've created a generic or a global helper method here to load with Picasso. Um, now we can actually make use of this little functionality inside of our image view here. So if we click on our image view, so it snaps there, we can see here um, that now we can say app, uh, where is it, load with Picasso, and then we are going to say at uh, open curly brace here, uh, and then I believe it's called image URL, and this is defined inside of here, image URL, which we are setting outside of here. So now we are inside of our implementation layer. We are not doing anything other than actually setting the, uh, the, the binding values here, right? And then inside of our view holder, inside of the actual XML, we are making use of these different variables inside of all these elements here to get what we want on screen. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rerun it here and we should have no issue um, with uh, our implementation here. It should basically react the exact same way that we would expect and what we see on screen at the moment here 
um, making use of that new binding adapter function that we added. And so we are loading up here again and as we can see here everything works uh, as we would expect as we scroll through these images load in uh, we could fancy it up with maybe a little bit of a placeholder or a loading image or something along those lines but for now we have um, all this stuff working as intended here. So this is a pretty good place to stop here. I'm going to go ahead and cut the video. If you made it this far, please do drop a like. If you are brand new, please consider subscribing if you want to see more of this content here. I'll be uploading on a pretty regular schedule here. And uh, yeah, uh, the code is in the description, so you can go ahead and pull it down. Check it out for yourself here. I'm quite happy with how this is working out. I think everything is looking great. And one last little note that I want to mention is that I am going to be away uh, this weekend, if you are following, if you are watching this video uh, on Wednesday morning uh, or whatever it is for you guys, um, I am going to be away this weekend here on a wedding in California, so I am probably not going to get to uploading until next week. So I do apologize for the small inconvenience, but um, I will be back next week ready to go where we will likely implement uh, an on-click listener here to maybe bounce the user out to the actual um, article on the web. Uh, and then I think we're going to look to actually make use of a web view so that we can actually show these articles in full in another activity uh, so the user doesn't have to leave the application at all. A little bit of a better UX. So um, if you're interested in that, please stay tuned and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.